So now let's directly move into each of the subtopics starting with the topic of set. We said it's nothing but a collection of collection of well defined objects. Say set of days of the week. When we say set of days of the week, it's quite clear Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this is a set. <coughs> then set of happy days of the week. Now this happy days of the week, we can't call it a set. In fact, you, it's an, wrong to even say set because what is happy for one person may not be happy for another person. So maybe in general, it is held that happy days are the days when you don't have to work. So one person could have Saturday, Sunday off, another person could take Monday off. He might be having a weekly off on Monday. So for Monday, one person has Monday as a happy day, other person could have Saturday and Sunday. Or maybe there are people who feel that they are more happy or rather happier on the days when they have work and not on the days when they have holidays. So this is a very opinion based concept that it's not well defined. Set of days of the week is fine or you can say set of say uh, rational numbers because set of rational numbers is well defined. So these are all various types of sets. So this is what you mean by set. Further, we shall be taking up the various ways of representing sets and various other concepts associated with sets. We just did what we are going to cover in this, what a set is. It's a collection of well-defined objects. How are set displayed? What are the ways in which you can represent a set? What are the rules involved? And the various types of operations with regards to one set or with regards to a set and another set in terms of its relationship with another set or two other sets we shall be taking up. Then the various types of sets we will be talking about. We have things like infinite set, finite set, singleton set, empty set, those kind of sets we talk about. Then we understand by complement of a set. If a given set you have and you compare it to the bigger set, how do you find the complement of a set? Then we have the power of a set. Then you have union and intersection of a set. If two sets we have, for one set you cannot have a union. So minimum you need is two sets. So what is the union of two sets? When you unite two sets, what we get? Then various types of numbers. You have sets of various types of numbers and also we are going to take about product of sets. So these are the various topics which we intend to cover. And slowly it will open up little by little and get a little more familiar with it. Okay, we did about what a set is. It's a collection of well-defined objects. So, so as we said, it is a collection of well-defined distinct objects, A, E, I, O, U. So here if you see, it means it is a set of vowels or say set A is the capital letter, whichever way A set is always denoted by a capital letter. And in general, exceptions you have, if there are letters involved, then we always write the letters in smaller casing. It is small letters just to avoid confusion. But suppose you have a situation wherein the, say for example, set of letters in uh, Alala, suppose. Now here the word itself is in capital letters. <clears throat> so, we write it as A, L, that's it. Now, here we are also coming across some important rules that where in a set, writing, the, we are going to enclose a set with always braced brackets, which is one rule. We never put this bracket because this is not meant for sets. So, we put it in brace bracket or curly bracket. You see, there is A, there are three A's and three L's. But we don't repeat elements in a set. When you write a particular set, unless it is in what is called as an ordered pair, when we talk about later on, 
Otherwise, we don't repeat elements in a set. If there are three A's, we write it only once. If there are three L's, we write it only once. So, there are only two letters A and L which you can write. Another thing that is there is you can write the same thing as L, A. The order is not important here because we are talking about elements of a set. Each of these is called an element of a set. The order, you can write them in any order. And two, or, well, two elements are always separated by a comma. And normally, if there are letters, we write them in the smaller casing as in this case. But in this case, since it is set of letters in a given word which itself has everything in block letters, we need to write this. Now, what is the reason behind this particular rule? Because the name of the set is always given in capital letters. And hence, just to minimize the confusion, we write the other elements in smaller cases. So, the name of the set is always written in capital letters. Then, you have elements of a set. The elements of a set are whatever are the elements. So, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So, you say 1 is an element of set B. 3 is an element of set B. But 2 is not an element of set B. Because 2 doesn't belong to this. 2 is an element of set C because 2 belongs here. Similarly, 6 and B. Does it satisfy? No, 6 is not an element of set B. So, when you say so and so is an element, it means the member. It is a member. And cardinal number means how many elements we have. For example, you have N of B. N of B in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, it is going to be 6. There are 6 elements in B. Similarly, cardinal number of C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. N of C is 6. So, we have to understand these rules. I repeat that. Repeat these rules. That whenever we write a set, we enclose all the elements of a set within raised brackets. The order of writing the elements, except in case of an ordered pair, is not important. You can write them in any order. Elements are never repeated in a set. Even if in the original uh, list of elements, if they are repeated, when you enclose them within the brace bracket, you write them just once. And each of the members of a set is called an element of the set. It's given by the simple epsilon. So we say so and so is an element. And we also have the concept of what we mean by cardinal number. Cardinal number means the total number of elements in a particular set. So, we write it as n of b is equal to 6. So, these are some basic understanding concepts regarding sets. Now, let's see how we apply what we learn or further rules what we have. Let's see. For example, here you have another example. A is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, each object is called or each member of a set is called an element. For example, Monday is an element in set A. So, we say Monday belongs to set A. Tuesday belongs to set A. Wednesday belongs to set A. So, hence you have this way we represent this concept of element. Just reiterating what we did in the previous case.